Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. The state of Iowa today reporting more than 4,000 cases, as we know, of coronavirus and 27 virus-related deaths, and we will get to those numbers in just a moment. But first, here in Siouxland, we are looking to your evening commute. Let's take a live look now with our meteorologist, Marcus Beasley. Thanks for joining us in our top story at 5. Well, taking a look outside at the Storm Tracker 9 cam, we are seeing that roads are improving. It's not snowing anymore, and that's always good for the roads out there. It makes it easier for the road crews to clean them up. But we're still seeing some slippery roads outside, still some snow out there on the roadway. So if you are traveling around this evening, make sure you're extra careful. Doesn't look too bad out there, but again, that slushiness uh, is definitely slippery compared to a dry roadway, so make sure you take that extra caution. But it does look like things will improve here in the next few hours. But remember, temperatures are below freezing right now. 27 in Sioux City and Wayne, 25 in Lamar's and Orange City, 26 in Yankton, 26 in Cherokee as well, and 25 in Storm Lake. So as we head into the overnight period tonight, freezing temperatures will persist, and I don't think that's going to help matters at all as far as the roads go. So. Still be mindful they could be slippery overnight tonight as we will see a cold night. Satellite radar showing that snow beginning to slide to the north, so we are going to see things improve as far as falling snow over the next few hours. But again, tonight, be mindful that roads could stay slippery. More details coming up on what we can expect throughout the rest of the week in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Now, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds today releasing some new health measures as our state continues seeing a surge in infections that could overwhelm local hospitals. The new measures require people to wear masks while attending indoor gatherings of 25 people or more. For gatherings of 100 or more, indoors or outdoors, masks will also be required. The new measures are not mask mandates and do not apply to local school districts. For bars and restaurants, social distancing, limited groups, and increased hygiene practices will be in play. Governor Reynolds looking to avoid a second statewide shutdown and keep businesses open. I'm here to tell Iowans, I need your help. If you want to keep our businesses open, if you want to keep our kids in school, if you want to make sure that we have hospitals and long-term care facilities and we have clinics that can treat not only COVID patients, but that they can treat other individuals that have serious health conditions that need to go to the hospital, then we all have to buckle down and take this serious. These new restrictions are effective starting tomorrow through the end of the month. You can find a full breakdown of the new measures on our website right now. That's SiouxLandProud.com. Taking a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland, Woodbury County Health officials confirming the 103rd virus-related death. This as 115 more cases are reported. 56 patients currently in hospital due to COVID-19. In Nebraska, Dakota County has 15 new positive tests today. The county there totaling more than 2,700 positives. And in South Dakota, Lincoln County reports 86 new confirmed cases. The county tallies more than 3,800 infections. As COVID-19 cases continue rising throughout the tri-state area, some communities are implementing new health measures. Over in Madison County, the Elkhorn Logan Valley Public Health Department reporting it's moving in the wrong direction, with a total count now of more than 3,000. In response to that and family input, Norfolk Public Schools announcing a virtual option for families come the spring semester. One health official says now is not the time to get comfortable. You have to get back to the basics, of course, which means wearing your mask in public. It's if you can get a paper mask, you know, like the surgical masks that we use, that's best. It's spreading fast enough. You really need to think twice about social gatherings. And coming up tonight at 6, KCAU 9's Lydia Vasquez shares how parents are reacting to Norfolk Public Schools offering this remote learning option. Virus infections are on the rise in the state of Nebraska as well, even reaching Governor Pete Ricketts and First Lady Suzanne Shore. According to officials, the couple was potentially exposed to COVID-19 during an outdoor dinner. The two will be quarantining for 14 days. Currently, neither are showing any symptoms tonight. And speaking virtually at a press conference this afternoon, Governor Ricketts stressing testing and contact tracing are essential in slowing the spread. It does not work, though, unless people answer that call from contact tracers. People are obviously not pleased when they find out they've tested positive. And uh, just allow a little space for grace, please. You know, please treat them with dignity and respect. If they make that phone call to you, they're just trying to do their jobs. They're just trying to keep us all uh, healthy. So. Please uh, respond back with grace and uh, let them know about your situation. 
Turning now to crime news, a man hospitalized in Sioux City after he was stabbed multiple times in Wakefield, Nebraska. That stabbing happened around 1125 in the morning at 205 Highland Street. The caller also reporting her 34-year-old son was missing. Shortly after Dixon County deputies responded, the Wayne Police Department was informed of a 34-year-old Hispanic man, the victim. He was being treated for multiple stab wounds at an area medical center. Now, no further details are being released at this time. However, the investigation remains ongoing. And at least one person is injured tonight after a pickup truck crashed into the North Sioux City Subway restaurant. That crash happening around 11 this morning. According to the store's manager there, an elderly man had just visited the store but left his Ford in drive, crashing it into the storefront. The manager says they had an employee sitting at a table by the wall when that truck made impact. They were thrown backwards. That employee was injured and taken to a local hospital. The extent of those injuries tonight are unknown, as are any charges. A new audit of the Plymouth County Sheriff's Office tonight revealing some problems with the office's evidence room. That report identifying numerous instances of evidence and case files being mismanaged. That includes six instances where the number of items in evidence logs and case files did not match the current inventory. Five instances of tampering with evidence bags and 18 instances where evidence was not sufficiently logged. Now, the report does recommend the Sheriff's Office strengthen controls and seizing those forfeited items. We have a full auditor's report posted for you on our website right now. The address there on your screen, SiouxLandProud.com. Since 2018, after an election, a random district from every county is randomly selected to be audited. That is to ensure the accuracy of the count. Now, over at the Woodbury County Courthouse, representatives from both political parties do come together with Auditor Pat Gill to recount more than 400 ballots from the Township of Sloan. These audits serve to increase faith in the election process. Ensure that it's transparent, uh, that uh, the observers are here from uh, the parties, and uh, that they make sure that uh, uh, everything is, uh, they are able to watch the whole uh, audit unfold before them and make sure that uh, it's up to snuff. That audit lasted for about an hour. The results were the same as they were on election night. So good news there. Balancing business as usual while slowing the spread of COVID-19 has proven hard for many businesses. That also includes the Iowa Judicial Branch. A new order released today postpones all future jury trials until February 1st of 2021. That order does not apply to trials already underway before November 16th of this year. According to the order, COVID-19 constitutes good cause for speedy trial extensions as deemed necessary. The Affordable Care Act hanging in the balance tonight as the Supreme Court began hearing arguments for a case that's fighting one of its mandates. KCAU 9 Washington correspondent Basil John reports on lawmakers' thoughts on whether or not the ACA will remain intact. After hearing arguments on both sides, the fate of the Affordable Care Act now rests in the hands of the Supreme Court. The argument this uh, morning in the, in the Supreme Court is one that's deeply troubling to me. Virginia Senator Tim Kaine says Republicans and President Trump have made it their mission to end the ACA. And he set his side on it as sort of like Captain Ahab trying to hunt Moby Dick from the first day of his presidency. Why uh, a party's top priority should be taking health insurance away from so many with no plans to replace it is beyond me. Pennsylvania Congressman Fred Keller says there is a reason to go after the ACA. What we need to do with health care in the United States is we need to create competition, we need to have transparency, and, and, uh, that, and, and allow people to have choice. Keller says whether or not the ACA is struck down, Congress needs to reevaluate the country's health care system. Let's stop talking about coverage and let's talk about delivery of affordable care. Because all we heard about for so many years is how many people are going to be covered that weren't currently covered. Kane says the health crisis brought on by the pandemic showcases just how necessary the ACA is. Millions and millions have been able to get through this pandemic better because of the ACA. This administration has pursued a one-way path to reducing coverage, and we don't need to keep going down that path. A decision on the case is not expected until June. In Washington, Basil John, KCAU 9 News. Most kids' Christmas lists are full of toys, but one eight-year-old is feeling generous. What's on his unusual wish list coming up? And it is looking like we're going to have a very cool Veterans Day. A warm up this weekend and that snow outside, it is going to be melting soon. Details on all of that after the break.
KU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we want to point out just very quickly, Gil Holling is reminding city residents why they'll be a little bit behind on some collections. Folks are asked to continue setting their garbage out and recycling as normal until they are collected because, uh, mm -hmm. as you've mentioned, Siouxland today woke up to ice snow. You could see an <laughs> icicle hanging yeah. off the KCAU 9 weather camera, but we are being treated to a little bit of sunset on the yeah. horizon. The clouds are beginning to break a little bit, and that's going to continue as we head into the overnight hours tonight. We are actually going to see our skies clear out pretty quickly here in the next few hours. It's been a snowy day today, but the snow, it has stopped for most of us here in Siouxland, and we are beginning to see things quiet down, and again, it's going to clear out tonight. The view from the KCAU 9 studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company still showing that snow blanketing the ground out there. It does look like our parking lots outside and roadways beginning to improve a bit, but again, overnight tonight, temperatures are going to continue to stay below freezing, so it does look like that could be an issue tonight with slippery roadways. So make sure you're extra careful. As far as snow accumulations go, Tilden, Nebraska, recording eight and a half inches of snow. Bloomfield, Nebraska, seven and a half. Parker, South Dakota, there at seven inches. Vermilion, South Dakota, a little over five inches. And here in Sioux City at the airport, recording three inches of snowfall. So everyone throughout Siouxland seeing some type of measurable snow. As far as road conditions go, they're not that great out there. We're still seeing completely covered roads for most of western Siouxland. So any of those areas in pink there, that's where we're seeing those completely covered roads from way north up to Vermilion and Parkston as well to the northwest. For us here in Sioux City, we're seeing those partially covered roads and north of Sioux City towards Sioux Center and also to the northeast around Emmitsburg. Some good news here, the six to 10 day temperature outlook is actually looking to be on the warmer side. We'll see some warmer temperatures moving into Siouxland and again, possibly some above average temperatures as we head into next work week. Overnight tonight, 19 degrees for your low temperature, so it is going to be cold again. Refreezing of that moisture out there on the roadways is very possible tonight, especially those bridges and overpasses, so make sure you're careful. And then 39 degrees tomorrow with mostly sunny skies. That's really going to help melt a lot of the snow in the roads, especially. I think the roads will be perfectly fine tomorrow, especially in the afternoon. The morning still could be a little slippery, but the afternoon it should be much better. 36 degrees Thursday, Friday 41, so the warming trend continues. 48 Saturday. There is a chance at a few rain showers Saturday. I'm not looking at too much, only about a 20% chance there, but take a look at Sunday, 50 degrees and into next week, low to mid 50s. So average high temperatures this time of year is around 50 degrees. So it looks like we could be above average next week. So we're finally getting closer to where we should be is what mm -hmm. you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> it does look like it's going to be pretty nice. I think 50 would feel nice on a day like today. You're right. All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, Jeopardy's Alex Trudek did pass away over the weekend from pancreatic cancer. How one man who appeared on that show in 2018 has an odd connection to Trebek and both legacies that they left behind. But first, this boy is not asking Santa for the latest toy or technology. Instead, he's wishing to help those less fortunate. How his wish is coming true next. According to one little boy, Christmas is a time to enjoy everything from families to good food to Legos. But he also has a special wish. That's to help the homeless celebrate Christmas as well. Tyler Harden shows us how. Meet Landon Harrison. Christmas for this eight-year-old means so much more than toys. While visiting Santa, he had a special wish. I think... Everyone should get a chance to have some food, shelter, even the homeless should. Everything on his list um, for the majority is, is for someone else. What eight-year-old asks for that? Landon asked Santa to give him enough food and blankets to help 50 homeless people this season. He plans to deliver what he gets across Greensboro on Christmas Day. Making some nice acquaintances and um, even getting some food and shelter. And I think that everyone deserves that. However, this holiday season is another for the family without one special person. His dad, Phil, had a long battle with esophageal cancer and passed away in 2017. I was very sad that this Christmas my dad could not be here. Audra Harrison says she sees her late husband's giving spirit in young Landon. I was going to try not to cry, <laughs> um, but he's always been like that. He's always been others first. I'm extremely proud. I couldn't be more proud. Even on his birthday, Landon asked his friends to create blessing bags with food to give away. I didn't care if they brought me any letters or anything. I just want to help. Now he and Santa's elves are working to make his Christmas wish come true. 
It's a special boy. We'll find out how a Kansas teacher who followed his dream led to an uncommon connection and how he's leaving a legacy even after his passing right after the break. Welcome back. Just months after competing on Jeopardy, a beloved teacher passed away from pancreatic cancer. It's the very same cancer that took Alex Trebek's life yesterday. Sheree Honeycutt shares his legacy. In Mr. Martin's second grade classroom, dreams were made. He always took the time to listen, and I felt like his children felt that too. They always felt like they were so important and that what they had to say was completely interesting to him. And one day, Larry Martin's own dream of being on Jeopardy came true. In 2018, he won the teacher's tournament, earning $100,000 on the program. I have been chasing this dream for, well, really uh, in earnest for 17 or 18 years, and it came true better than I could have hoped, so I hope that's inspiring to them. He inspires me because he's a really good teacher and, um, He's really, like, nice, and he's really smart. Shortly after Mr. Martin won, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. My hope was that he could get the care and that they had caught it soon enough that he could have a prolonged life, but knew that he had a battle ahead of him. He passed away in January of last year and was remembered by Alex Trebek, who was struggling with his own diagnosis. Teachers wore purple ribbons to remember Martin and support Trebek. They are wearing them as a tribute to Larry Martin, last year's teacher's tournament winner, who shortly after the tournament passed away from pancreatic cancer. With Trebek's passing on Sunday, the teachers say life brought the two together at the right time. A drawing of Martin is in Belinder's halls to remind students to not only go for your dreams, but how you pursue them matters. I think our legacies that are equally as important as the big Jeopardy finale that he got to experience. Taking a live look outside right now at sunset over Storm Lake. Marcus will return with another check on our forecast coming up next. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. He's in the newsroom for us. Hi, Tim. Hey, thanks a lot, Sophie. And it's been a tragic day because of our heavy snow and ice. One person has died in an accident in Plymouth County after a vehicle hit a patch of ice and then rolled, ejecting one of its passengers. We'll have more on that coming up tonight at 6. And folks having to clean up after this Mother Nature mess, well, they need to be careful. It's bad on the back. Folks are reminded to take extra precautions while moving the water-soaked precip. That is, unless you have this kind of shovel that you can turn to, and not everybody's that luckily. Also at 6 tonight, the story of one Boy Scout and his troop who are making dozens of school desks. It is a project that uh, will not only help him become an Eagle Scout, but help some fellow students as well. And as you can tell, they're not building those desks here in Siouxland. <laughs> it's a little sunnier there. <laughs> That's right. Well, that could have been footage from this weekend. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Tim, because we went from uh, having 70s to having this and uh, overnight temperatures dropping down once again. Yeah, it's going to be really cold tonight, upper teens, lower 20s. Mm. So that refreezing on the road, definitely going to be an issue tonight, especially on those elevated bridges and overpasses. So make sure you're careful if you're driving around tonight. And then tomorrow, we're going to see a lot of that snow, especially melts off the roadways, 39 degrees tomorrow plenty of sunshine so it is going to be a bit nicer tomorrow and we'll begin the process of melting the snow and it looks like we'll continue to see warmer temperatures as we head into the weekend with above average temperatures returning next week i like how that sounds thanks mm -hmm. a lot marcus and thank you for joining us i'll see you back here at six until then have a great night